So it's pretty hard to believe that out of all six of these Glock carbine conversions, only one of these do I feel that I think is really worth the money knowing what I know now. So today I figured I would do the ultimate Glock carbine conversion comparison. Talk about the one that I kind of got about a month or so ago, and I think it's the best one out of all of these so far. And I kind of wanted to go through the gambit of everything I've tried in the past three years, I'll tell you why I didn't like it and why I did like it, why I ultimately landed on the one that I did. But before I get into the comparison test, I kind of want to talk about a couple things, how I really feel about Glock carbines. So, you know, three years ago, when I started looking into Glock carbines, you couldn't build an AR-9 for the same price. Today, it's getting a little bit easier Easier. AR9s have come down in cost, but three years ago, AR9s that used Glock mags were probably $1,100 or more. So these little conversion kits always appealed to me because you didn't have to go shell out the money, you know, for something like one of these bad boys, which don't get me wrong, these things are awesome. I love them to death. It was one of those things that was like, well, I don't gotta buy a new firearm. I could just buy this chassis system. And now I get more points of contact and a more stable shooting platform. You're not getting any higher muzzle velocities or anything like that, but some of these are practical. Some of them aren't practical. Some of them don't perform the way I thought they would, and some of them do. So for my OG subscribers out there, let me know if you were around when this video came out. This was the KPOS G2 from Fab Defense. This was the very first Glock carbine conversion system that I ever tried. Came in this really nice case, came with the sights. There was a lot going on for it, I, but there was a lot that was missing from it as well. Um, you know, even this little thing right here, it folds, it can be fired like this you know, whatever your little heart desires. And the thing that bothered me about it was, well, when I conceal carry, I always carry appendix and I always carry in a Kydex holster and it's always chambered and ready to go. And then the holster prevents trigger from being depressed while it's in my pants. So with these, they've always kind of been marketed as like a backpack gun or a truck gun that you could just pull out real quick, start shooting. So when I started looking at this one, there was a couple things I didn't like about it. First of being, there was no way to protect the trigger. So if I did want to throw this in a backpack or throw it in the truck, I'd have to pull it back. I'd have to charge around before I could start shooting. The other thing I didn't like about it was there was no way to really adapt a brace to this without heavily modifying it. And at that time, I just didn't feel like modifying it. So you just got this little tube, so to speak, that's foam padded and you just had to cheek it. Um, you couldn't really rest it against your shoulder. Now, granted, this did come out before the ATF reversed their ruling on shoulder braces and stuff, but this one just, I wouldn't carry it in a backpack or in my truck because I can't protect the trigger. And it wasn't super stable, so you had to cheek it. About a year or so later, another Glock carbine came in. Oh man, who remembers this monstrosity? Right here. This was like the second iteration of the one I just showed you. It's the Fab Defense KPOS Scout. Now, I don't know why, but when they reached out to me to send it to me, they sent me the SBR version. And when I received it, I sent them an email and I said, hey, I can't legally review this because it has shorter than a 16 inch barrel and it has an actual buttstock, not a brace. And they were like, yeah, we know the brace version isn't out yet, but we got this 16 inch Glock barrel that you can put in here. It was funny because I really didn't want to make the video about this at all. But what's crazy is that was one of the most viewed videos in the past year. It's not the most viewed video, but it was definitely one of the most viewed videos. And it was mainly a bunch of people just talking crap in the comments. And I was like, yeah, I get it. Aside from this one, you know, having the butt stock on it, uh, they did eventually come out with a braced version. Now, if this one was a braced version, I actually thought it wasn't too bad. It had a way to protect the trigger. That, I thought that was very nice. It also had a way, this also folded down and then you could you know, shoot it just like so. And then you charged it just like an AR-15. All right, cool, whatever. Didn't hear much else about that. But you know, ultimately it wasn't for me because, I mean, the 16 inch barrel is cool. You do get higher muzzle velocities with it. However, this doesn't conceal very well with a 16 inch barrel. So therefore you can't throw it in your backpack easily. And it's probably not a good truck gun. Then I came across the Micro Roni Gen 3. This one was almost perfect. There was just a couple of things that just did not like. Number one, they had this little thing on the side right here, this little button, and you would depress it whenever your slide locked open, you'd depress this right here. And supposedly your slide would go back home, chamber another round. And it was never able to get that part to work ever at all. Don't get me wrong, you could just, you know, rack it by pulling the side charger. That kind of brings me to my next con that I didn't like about this one was this side charging piece 
it came out. The way it works, if you can see inside of it right there, it basically fits into the stock serrations on your Glock. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So you can't really have any custom slides if the rear serrations aren't the same as, as OEM Glock. But the biggest problem that I had with this was I almost lost it so many times. There were so many times I was getting ready to go to range to go do something and I totally misplaced this somewhere. And so that was kind of a bummer, but they did have a really cool little trigger guard right here. It did fold, it has a brace, and that would be a really good backpack gun and or truck gun. It also had a little place for a proprietary light. It has a little dummy light in there right now, but this little piece would basically come out and then you could buy their proprietary light and put it in there and you were good to go but I still didn't want to carry it or try to use it for self-defense just because of that slide stop slide release just really bothered me. So a few months after I made that video, the company Flux got in touch with me about this guy, the Flux Brace. I did, I had really high expectations for this one. And so basically what it does is it attaches to your back strap of your Glock, you press this little button, it shoots out, and theoretically you go bang, bang, bang. Also had a place where you could have an extra magazine right here and the mag actually would lock in place pretty good. It also had a way where you could put an Olight S1R in there and then it had a little hole, a little slot right here where you could fit the charger behind it so you didn't have to remove the Olight. And then this little hole was used to depress the light and all that stuff. So here was the problems I had with it. Number one was manipulating it. Typically you're gonna rack your slide here. Well, this little slant right here, whenever I was actually at the range shooting it and I'd go to rack real fast, it pushed my hand off. And a lot of times I wasn't able to rack it far enough to chamber another round. The other thing I didn't like about it was it didn't have a trigger guard on it of any kind. And so yes, it does fold away very nicely and it would be a perfect backpack gun and or truck gun, but you would have to do that and then chamber around. Now I added a red dot to it because it makes it easier to rack, but if you didn't have a red dot, it's gonna be pretty tough to rack it. The other thing I didn't like about it was the length of pull was super incredibly short. For me, I got longer arms, I guess, from what people say. It just was not comfortable to shoot at all. And I didn't notice any advantage. And I really wanted to like this one, I really did. And the company was really cool after I made that video. They said, hey, thank you for your constructive feedback. We're gonna take that and try to make the product better. So that's awesome. I'm not bashing this product, I'm just saying it was lacking a few things that I thought was key and it was kind of expensive. And then I got this one. Now, one of the cons to all of the other ones that I've talked about so far, and including the ones that I'm gonna talk about moving forward, none of them would work with Polymer 80 frames, except for this one. This one is the IMI Defense Kaidon. The cool thing about this one was, number one, it just felt really good to shoot. Uh, it, the charging handle was moved forward, so you didn't have to reach like back here to charge it like you do with the Ronis. So I like that it was up here the other cool thing about this one, they have all these adapter plates that you can buy and it works with like 80 something different brands of handguns. And so I was like, well, that's cool. So if you buy this for say a Glock and then one day you get like a, a different type of gun, like an FN and you, you can just buy an adapter plate and use it with the FN. I thought that was legit. And then the other cool thing about this one that the none of the other ones that we're talking about today have is the ability to use your own brace system. It basically works just like an AR-15. So the way that that works is you get your own buffer tube, you get your own castle nut, your own brace, you put it on here. If you want it to fold, then you get yourself one of those folding adapters. I'll put a link to some that I like, but this one had one major problem. Well, two. Number one, if I wanted this to fold, I had to go spend, you know, 150 to 250 extra dollars for a folding adapter. So it wouldn't really work if I wanted to use this as a truck gun, nor as a backpack gun. The second thing that I didn't like about this one was it did not have a trigger guard for when it's packed away. Which brings us to today's Glock carbine conversion in question. This is the Micro Roni Gen 4. So basically with this one, all of those flaws that I mentioned earlier has been fixed with this guy. So it's very similar to the Gen 3 Roni that I talked about just a second ago. However, they got rid of that stupid little piece right here. Remember that plastic piece I showed you and I was like, I could never get the slide stop slide release to go home. They got rid of that. Kudos, I'm so glad you guys did that. So they've also added a place for an extra magazine and it locks into place. There's a little button right here to pull it out. I thought that was pretty cool as well. They still have their proprietary design for the light. So right here, they do have a light. I think the light is made by Olight. 
but I think it's proprietary. You can put a light in it if you want, or you could mount a light on the side here or this side here, or like a side mounted light if you so choose. It also has the trigger guard right here and it folds, has a brace, all that crazy stuff. So with no mag in it, or if you had flush mags in it, that's how big it would be, you know, and if you didn't have a red dot on it and was using irons only, it would be even smaller. And not only that, they fixed the other flaw that I had with the Gen 3. So with the Gen 3 version, you remember that this little charging handle piece? And I was like, I hated it when you pulled it out, you would lose it. Well, now it's integrated in so it doesn't come out. It just stays in the gun full time. You got your safety here, it goes up just like that. There is a little gap in here, but it's not enough to get the trigger pulled because even if something got in kind of up here at the top, it's got to get down to the trigger safety to pull it. Then when you can actually disable the safety from either side, it doesn't really matter. Pull it down, let me charge it and boom. Then when it locks open, you can either use your slide lock slide release or you can use your charging handle to bring it home. Either one of them works. And as you'll see in the range footage, works really well. For this little mag guy up here, this little mag holder, it's really nice. All right, cool. So, you know, as we can see up close, you know, how this all fits together and why I think that this is probably the best one and probably the only one that I would buy after knowing what I know now. And what I say about that is there's a lot of stuff we go out and buy thinking we're gonna love it. And then sometimes we get it home and then we're, we're almost scared to admit to ourselves that we don't like it because we have so much money invested in it. Although they did solve all the problems that this one has, does it actually shoot at the range? And it ran incredibly well. Didn't matter, you know, obviously it's a Glock, so you don't got to worry about the reliability of it, but it, nothing about it felt awkward. Like for example, I could take the safety here and I could just come down and go straight to shooting, or I could manipulate the safety with my thumb over here, not a problem. The length of pull isn't too short, nor is it too long, it's perfect. And you can charge it just by grabbing the side right here and shooting it. I tested it with this gun as well as another OEM Glock that I have and everything functioned flawlessly. I didn't have any hiccups at all. I didn't have to add any oil to this system or nothing. It just, I put the gun in, I put the mag in and I went to town, bang, 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 up jumped the boogie. We were good to go. That made me very excited. Favorite pros about this one is the price. So of all the other ones that I've showed you so far, this one is the cheapest one. These are $249.99. Now, if you start adding red dots and sights and lights, yeah, the price goes up from there, which honestly I think is the perfect price point for this, considering how cheap AR9s are becoming to build and buy. So far, I've said nothing but nice things about this. You're probably asking yourself, well, dude, there's gotta be cons. Yeah, there's a couple of cons. The main con to this is you have to be using an OEM Glock slide in order for it to work because of the way that this adapter piece mates to the slide. It also won't work with polymer 80 frame because of the way that it mates to the trigger guard right here. As long as you're using an OEM Glock, this is gonna work. So this particular model, it says it right here on the muzzle device, works with the 19, 20, 